Hey, what's going on guys? So yesterday I went on a hike with my wonderful woman and I am still feeling the lingering effects of all that. <laughs> uh, so yesterday morning I started out, I did more cardio than usual. I did 50 minutes and then we went on a hike and we walked at a pretty decent pace for about three and a half hours. So I would say roughly we walked about 10 miles but man, a lot of it was uphill or downhill, and it's just real weird. Yeah, it's real weird on the on the legs to be doing all that, especially when I have not actually walked for that long in quite a long time. So I did that, and then came home later. I got some time in between this. Don't get me wrong, and I'm I still ate all my meals within the the whole day. I did I did this. There wasn't any like breaks in the day. Me eating. I brought my food with on the hike, so that helped. But I'm also not eating a lot of food right now. So it, you know, it, it replenished me enough to get the rest of the things in my day done. But definitely like it, it did not, <laughs> the food was not energizing me more than uh, kind of just drinking water, you know? So I did all that and I, I, uh, I did my workout. Then I did 30 minutes of stairs before the day ended. So you could say I, did an ass load of cardio yesterday and you know i did not go off script or anything with the diet so <clears throat> all that's just pure cardio cutting benefits right there pure cardio gains but that brings up an interesting question now like would you want to would you want to do shit like that all the time if you're trying to cut a bunch of weight or better yet like if you're if you're trying to be a stage ready bodybuilder should you be doing shit like that all the time? Well, I'm gonna say no. I think it is definitely something that can bolster, can give you a little kickstart with the progress continuing to come, but you gotta be doing it sparingly. You don't wanna do it all the time. It's not that you can't, it's like towards the later stages of a prep, I probably won't even wanna do anything like this at all. Uh, you know, not just because I'm not going to have the energy for it, but doing a, a large excess on top of what's expected, that could potentially help doing it every couple weeks. But if you're doing that every weekend or multiple times a week, you're going to definitely end up losing more of your muscle mass than you intended to throughout your cutting process. It's like guys that, I don't know if any of you know this, but guys that start hammering out way too many stair stepper uh, sessions of cardio, it ends up making their legs smaller on stage. They may not necessarily have lost like actual muscle tissue. I mean, I would argue they lost a little bit of it, but they might, they might not necessarily have lost a lot of muscle tissue, but their legs are not holding on to as much glycogen so they're flat as hell and they're not filling up very well because you've kept beating them to death with all the quad intensive cardio you're doing i mean walking is not real not quad intensive but if you're doing like a 10 mile walk every every week the whole prep you're for sure gonna end up being smaller than you intended to on stage. That's why the right balance is what's key here. That's why if you notice like throughout a prep process, the food progressively ends up getting lower and lower and you do a little bit more cardio and a little bit more cardio. Sorry about the dog, everybody. But so you do that and you're gradually decreasing the food and increasing the activity because you want to do just enough to get your body moving. And by moving, I mean losing, losing fat. I don't want to do way over what my body currently requires to lose the next bit of fat. Because now my body is going to adapt to that activity level. And I may have drastic drops in the beginning of doing stuff like that. Later on, I'm going to end up not being lean, lean enough. And... I'm not going to have it in me to do the insane amounts of cardio it require 
to push myself to the end stages of cutting weight. In the beginning, it'd be awesome. You know, I'm gonna, I'll lose like, I don't, even up to 20 pounds within a month or so if I'm just doing crazy stuff like that. But it, you know, it's not, it's not quality loss there. Because towards the back end of the process, my body's not gonna wanna respond to anything I'm doing because I was doing everything I could right from the jump. So that's why it helps to gradually change things up. You know, once the body adapts to what you're currently doing, and it's for sure not budging at all with uh, losing weight or like the scale or any of that. But yeah, now it's time to decrease the food a little bit and maybe increase the cardio. But you're trying to do as little as possible to keep your body continuing to move at a steady pace with the fat loss. And that's really the recipe for success there. But it could be a little tricky figuring out your body at first. Now, you could outsource to a coach. Does not have to be someone like me. But the thing is, so you're, you're trying to learn your body. And everyone's a little bit different. Some people require an, a disgusting amount of cardio for their body to lean out as much as someone, they could be doing little to no cardio and you don't really know which one of those groups you fall into unless you try stuff out. And hiring a coach, especially if they're a knowledgeable one, they're a little bit quicker than you will be at figuring all that out. They're gonna tell you to do X, Y, and Z, and then you're gonna do it. And they're gonna get a way sharper clue of where to go from there if you're not responding to stuff than you would be yourself. So that's where the benefit with that comes in, but it does take time. And you can't get frustrated at yourself or the person you hired if there's a little bit stagnation or things look lackluster in the beginning, because it takes a while. They gotta figure all this out. Like once they, they know this amount of cardio and this amount of food is where this guy's body is thriving, now they, they know where to work off from with way better footing than just throwing the kitchen sink at everything from the beginning. So it, a, a lot of a lot of patience comes into that too, and it's it's a really hard virtue too when you're hiring a coach or anything like that because guys are quick to start blaming people and pointing fingers, especially when someone else is telling you what to do, because it's bodybuilding is the harshest possible critique a person can face. You're you're literally being shit on for how you look. Uh, and, and not just like attractiveness wise, like you're being shit on for the, the kind of shape your body's in. And that's very personal. So if you have a bad showing or a lack of progress because you've had very little time with a, a new coach, you can't blame them for that. It takes time. The guy I've been with right now, we're going over two years together and I just continue getting better and better. And even though this guy has a lot of clients, he takes well enough notes that when he's able to pull up my file when we're talking or making changes, he's able to see all the adjustments and everything in a real concise way over time. So, you know, he, he's able to refresh himself fairly quickly on what's going on with my body. And he's very good at making changes. And I'm very, I trust Blue very much because they're, had been a lot of uh, periods of times where he had me do something that I would not have done if I was coaching myself. For instance, when I was bulking up, I had a period of uh, about a month and a half where my weight just refused to budge. And if it were me doing everything, two weeks into that, I would have just bumped the food up and said, fuck it, because my weight's not going up. So I would, in my mind, get anxiety that I'm not progressing. And I would have bumped the food up, but blue waited a month and a half. And then my weight started going up again and he didn't change a damn thing. He, he knew to hold the food where it's at. And then when the ball started rolling again, we let it roll for a little bit. And then we increased the food on top of that. And the progress continued to pour in. Like, especially for myself over, over half a decade of my life, uh, my body, did not want to get over 230 pounds no matter what no matter what additional shit i throw up myself my body would not 
want to go over 230. And what I, I, I would throw more and more food at it and my body would still stay around 230, but I would just start becoming a fatter version of that. And it was very frustrating over time, but with the help of my coach and learning from him, but also giving feedback from what I already know about myself, uh, that's just continued to have me reap in as much progress as possible. And yeah, if you take a look at me, I'm definitely not the biggest guy. You could argue I'm not close enough to have a professional worthy physique yet, but you cannot deny that I've made drastic amounts of progress in a shorter amount of time than other people would be able to make the same. But that's not to say other, like there's definitely crazy individuals out there with freak genetics. You know, they'll blow me out of the water with this progress, but I'm very aware of where my, my genetic lines lie. So I, compared to other people with similar, with a similar affinity to putting out muscle, I know for a fact I've done more well off than those people could. And I, I do have pride in that because it was a lot of hard work, especially too, I put on more muscle than ever before and reached new heights while rehabbing an injury. I was out of the gym for a pretty long amount of time, say over four months. But even when I got back in, there were, there were a lot of pitfalls I encountered because despite all the physical therapy that I had done, I still had a lot of nerve pain and there was nothing to do to smoothly reintegrate myself back into weightlifting. So I was starting out, like I would go in the gym and I could not even hold two pound dumbbells to do chest flies. So I would sit on an incline bench and I would just have my bare hand. And I'm sure people probably thought it was weird, but I had to just go through the motion of doing a chest fly with my hands with no weight. And I had to start from there not being able to touch the empty barbell doing a bench press like that that was where the starting point was it was pretty much like having to relearn how to lift weights but everything hurts like hell the whole time so i had to do that and i i worked my bench press back over two plates and even up to three but i had terrible fucking nerve pain every time i tried to initiate a set so i would do 315 but I would have to be bouncing this shit off my chest. And I still do, to be honest, just to get the set rolling. And I, I would just have to continually do shit like that or kind of swing myself into starting the first rep of a set just to get momentum to get it going because I had so much fucking nerve pain. I mean, it, it quite literally felt like I was gonna fuck myself up again if I tried to do a rep normal to start out a set. The rest of the set looked fine, but I had to do like some really weird, interesting shit just to get the weight up. And I had to do a lot of that over time. Uh, but you know, I, I got bigger than ever before. And it was because I, I focused on what I could control. So objectively, I already know that the objective better thing for me to do to make gains in the gym would be to slow down the reps slow down the reps and take a hard pause at the contraction and all the way in the bottom in the stretch position. And I just flat out didn't lift like that. I knew it was objectively better, but the way I enjoy weightlifting, it's just kind of cranking out a bunch of reps, not super fast, but just cranking them out with some intensity in my face. And I like, like some pep in my step and I'm not able to lift like that anymore. So I had to relearn how to lift weights, lift them differently, albeit, albeit it's better, and just had to coast through, going through all the basics again in a very unfun manner for a long period of time. And I made more gains like that. And I learned to love training again, even though I'm doing it completely different. I might still have a set or two where it's a, a bit quicker, and shit like that but i generally speaking i i am slow slowing things down and taking pauses and really just trying to keep under tension for a long period of time but make the tension as quality as possible so i would had to do a lot of stuff like that and i got, it got bigger than than ever it's still not big enough but it, it was a lot of progress 
and it's going to con continue going that way uh, as long as I don't hurt myself for, I don't know, the next probably eight years or so. I'm probably going to hurt myself before then, but let's be optimistic here. So, I mean, this is really what it comes down to, though. You know, you got to you got to swim with all the changes that come your way. You can't be resistant to all of them because you're just not going to be able to live your life how you'd enjoy if you're fighting everything. I wasn't happy with barely being able to lift any weight, but I love lifting weights, even though I fucking hated it in all of those moments. I did, I did not just say fuck it and quit. I got back on the horse and I learned a really hard lesson and I adjusted to that lesson by applying a little bit of wisdom to it. It, it helps to look at it that way. Maybe you're out there and you're going through a similar type of situation. Well, hopefully you can learn from my experience a little bit. And I, even if you did mess yourself up already, it's all right. It's, it's not the end of the world. Things are going to feel different. You're going to have to do things different now. You may not be able to do things to the same degree as before, but you got to find new ways to new ways to keep doing this and making it a part of your life. You will enjoy it again, but it's going to suck for a while. But you need to go under the weight and experience those uncomfortable aches and pains so you can get back to where you are. Things should not excessively hurt if you're coming back from an injury, but it's, it's probably going to hurt and feel uncomfortable to go about your usual business in there. But I think everyone, well, I shouldn't say everyone, I think a lot of people out there, they have a good head on their shoulders if they really care about this. If they don't, and they're just doing it to pick up chicks and stuff, well, it's going to be very apparent because they're just probably going to quit once they hurt themselves real bad. The people who actually care about it, I have a lot of faith in them. They, they, may, they may go about things the wrong way, maybe out of hubris or whatever it may be. But if you really love this, you're going to have to learn the hard lessons at some point. And I trust that people are going to learn them because they love it. So anyway, guys, I got some milk for my lovely woman lactose free because she can't hang with that stuff bringing it back to her right now and i'm gonna cut out of this video so i can go back to living my life see ya